you know, looking at the IDOT numbers and realize and, and seeing, uh, you know, their numbers show that that point uh, six percent of African Americans and point nine percent of the Hispanic uh, American owned companies received a portion of those funds of the 400 plus million dollars that was spent with small businesses in in the in the uh, scope that was covered um, that being said 31 percent of the population combined African American and Hispanic 31 percent of Illinois population is of those two groups and yet less than two percent of the of the jobs awarded uh, went to those groups is that fair um, is it fair? No, it's not fair. Because because there continue to be hurdles and barriers set before diversity companies. One of the biggest hurdles is bonding. Explain the, the bond, hurdle, Explain the bonding issue for for the average uh, reader uh, that isn't familiar with bonding. What is that process, and and why is it such a detriment, um, and why is it so difficult to, to to deal with for small disadvantaged businesses? Because the majority of the bonding requirements deal with credit. And, it's, and based upon the economic conditions of today, most small business owners, uh, their credit is marginal at least, at the best. And so if, you're in the, if your credit score isn't in the 700s or close to 800s, you would not get bonded. And the second thing, go ahead. And so credit, credit scores, personal credit scores uh, come into play. Uh, but if you're a corporation, how, is it is it different? Do they look at a corp uh, an incorporated business differently, or is it still that you have to personally guarantee these bonds as as the owner? You have to personally guarantee the bonds as the owner with the small business because they do not have the track record nor the credentials to justify having just a corporation uh, be liable for that indebtedness if it should ever occur. Got it. Generally, what happens in the large corporations is that they have enough assets in the company and enough um, uh, cash in the company where the surety company will bypass having them sign a personal indemnity agreement based upon experience and based upon the assets that they have. So they can all, if their situation does occur, they are comfortable recouping their loss through just the assets of the company. <laughs> So, you know, it makes it pretty difficult, though, if you're a small business owner, and I, th- I, and I think, you know, uh, setting race aside for a minute, all small business owners face that challenge of, of cash flow and, and, and bonding. However, it likely is more difficult for a, um, you know, a minority business at this point. Well, it is because uh, most companies, you know, are mom pawn shops or there really is no formal educational program out here for a small business owner, particularly of diversity, to teach them how to be a successful small business owner. There's nothing out here for that. What can, what can, what can be done? You know, you know well, I, I mean, what can be done at the state level and at the local level to, to help this along, help this process along, help taxpayers and residents in many cases? Uh, because one of the arguments that was made by the black contractors of Will County is that they're local residents and these projects are being done in their own neighborhoods. Right. And that's the issue. I mean, right now, based upon the economic conditions that are going on, um, you you also have to understand that there are specific hurdles and barriers that are placed in front of diversity companies that are not the norm for other companies, if you get my drift on that. The other thing is that if you're not, if you don't understand how to run a successful business, then you never will. And most of the owners are self-performing themselves, so they're actually out there doing the work. And the owner of a business that ought to be successful cannot physically go out there and do the work. There are programs to help these small business owners to become successful, like the ones at Chicago Urban League, but very few people are taking on those type of programs because it's successful. Right, and it's a, and it's a ploy to make sure you stay down there, and you and you make sure you be down there, just by the simple use of the word minority and subcontractor. Those are demeaning terms, which means less than beneath or below. Correct. But it sends a subliminal message to these business owners, and eventually they feel that way and they react that way. I'm less than. I'm beneath this. I'm below that. So please help me out. And so the subservient syndrome takes place 
and it causes them to continue to be in that realm without having the um, uh, the tenacity to move out of that area unless they're being influenced or encouraged to do that and showing some results at the end. Let's strike it right at the core. Is there, to your knowledge, is there, or how many are there, if so, prime contractors that are either African-American-owned or Hispanic-owned in the five-county area? Let's start with Northern Illinois. I mean, how many are you aware of that, that, can, that can qualify for these big jobs as a prime contractor, not the sub? Uh, very few companies. Very few companies that have done that. And, and if they do get into that realm, then they're part of the network of saying, okay, you've now been accepted into the program, and we're going to go ahead and uh, see what we can do to help you get just to a certain point. But again, they still, you know, have to struggle and deal with just local mentality. Uh, the other issue is that small business owners really have tunnel vision. They don't think outside of just their local community. They could go to other states and perform and get business as well. But we've been, you know, a lot of them have just been browbeaten to the point where the only work you're ever going to get is here. And if you start looking somewhere else, you're going to fail miserably even though that's false. And that goes against the American way, does it not? Absolutely. I mean, Absolutely. We're, we're all we're all taught that, that equal opportunity uh, exists in this country, but that's a fallacy, yes? Well, the construction industry is a different animal, and there's a concerted effort to make sure the small businesses do not grow, because if they do, now you're going to get, there's a fear that they're help growing competition. Did you feel that's the total, that's the total misnomer? Did you, you know, after the the meeting and you heard what the mayor said that he was against set asides? Why is why would the mayor? First of all, do you agree with with the mayor in the fact that uh, he's against set asides? Do you agree with that notion? And his reasoning for that was pretty straightforward that he felt that there was a lack of competition when you allow set asides. Is that an excuse or is it a truth? Uh, that's that's not true. Uh, there's plenty of competition out there uh, if you want to view it at that point. Uh, but the whole goal and purpose of set aside is allow communities have been uh, allow businesses who have been historically uh, discriminated against as far as opportunity to give them a chance to participate in the uh, economic uh, advantages and opportunity that's out there for them now. That's the whole purpose of set aside. Last it's week, not great competition, and the biggest issue is that the larger companies feel that if they support these small businesses, they're creating competition, and that's totally untrue, because the small businesses have opportunities that the large ones 